Hey everybody, happy Thursday, April 19th. Thirsty I, Thursday. Thirsty Thursday. <laughs> gotta love a guest and friend who wants to have a cocktail when we walk in. Um, welcome to Ted Show Live. It is episode 158. I'm here with my friend Roxy LeBlanc. Hello everyone. LeBlanc. So let us know you can hear us or see us. I'm always worried about that. I don't know if you know the story, but I did an entire show once and nobody was, hey Bob Lee, let us know you can hear us or see us. Hey Bob. Um, and I did the 30 minutes and the guy had to reshoot it because um, there was no volume. The whole time? The whole time. Oh my so gosh. let us know you can hear us or see us. If I need to turn up the volume, I, I can. Uh, but I think Roxy and I can definitely um, enunciate properly. Uh, so welcome. Any, any thumbs up? Let me know. Can you hear us? See us? Yes, I'm please. I'm going to share this video. With I hear you. Thanks, John. Appreciate it. All right. So, oh, thanks, Susie. All right. So, um, Mac, I saw you um, perform, not perform, but I saw all of the posts from Maxine because you perform at Maxine's on Shine. So when I had Maxine on, she's like, you have to have Roxanne LeBlanc. Ra Roxanne Faye LeBlanc. Am I saying it right? LeBlanc. <laughs> That's it. That's it. That means white, right? The white. The white. Le the Blanc. white. Le Blanc. <laughs> um, and I, so I looked up, I'll look, see John, oh John Wilde's not afraid. She is pretty. You're making me blush, John. <laughs> uh, even prettier in person. Just a beautiful girl. Um, beautiful lady. But uh, I looked at your Facebook. I'm like, she is exactly what needs to be on the show. You're so sweet. Uh, I love it. You have such a wide a variety of a background. You do so many things. You're in an entertainment, but it's all levels and all all fixtures in entertainment. It's not just one type of entertainment. So you see all the hearts going? Don't you love when that instant love yeah. comes in? So welcome. Thank you so much for being here. I'm so glad you're here. I'm so so uh, before we get started and get the history, you have to tell them that you walked in and I, I always ask my, my guest, is there anything that you'd like to drink? Because I never want to infer, hey, you can have cocktails if you want. And Roxy has her own drink. Yes, I do. A Roxy on the rocks. And I've already got a good little... And it tastes like going. a vacation is what she vacation said. Vacation in a glass. <laughs> and it know. is very good. Mm -hmm. And it's delicious. And it's fruity. And um, I imagine it, it is totally reflective of your personality. Oh, thank you so much. All right, so give us a little background on you. Because someone your age doesn't go, I'm born and now I want to be in a cabaret in vaudeville. <laughs> I did. No, I did. Did I you did. really? I soon, I'm, as soon as I came off the how do you know the word it, vaudeville? Well, I'm a huge um, Bob Hope fan. Uh, Lucio Ball and Scarlett O'Hara. I, I really, I would wake up in the morning. Um, I grew up with my grandparents for a while and I would, as soon as Sunday morning, I love Lucy on repeat, you know, Ricky. <laughs> and her training was all about billion. Oh yeah, I have so. a, um, I have a lot of experience in belly dance, a lot of experience face painting, princess parties, um, really all facets of dance. I have a degree in acting, uh, but yeah, I'm really, really passionate about soapbox, pop up theater, um, everything from juggling, stilt walking, fire dancing. You know? So you said you're from. We'll we'll share the ingredient. If if Roxy wants to share the ingredient, she can tell you. Oh what's in it. yeah, I would John love wants to. to know. Okay, so Roxy on the rocks. This is Myers, but I'm a huge Kraken and then Sailor Jerry's fan. But dark rum, uh, half pineapple, half orange, a dash of grenadine, not too much, and a little splash of Sprite. And shaken, not stirred. <laughs> it's delicious, honestly. It's so good. Yeah. All right, but you, so you're from Louisiana, because you can yes. hear it a little bit. Once in a blue moon, well, you say as an actress, word. I can have any dialect you want. <laughs> but if you want me to talk like I'm from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, then I'll be sure to go ahead and do that. I love it. My son-in-law is from Shreveport. Oh, really? I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. Well, hello, son-in-law from Shreveport. I know. That's it. I Does Cameron he know how to work a tractor? Him. Oh yeah, they have ranches and oh. they do all this hunting thing and oh. lots of ING's. Nice and I don't southern know how to boy. Do. Yeah, he's a good southern mm -hmm. boy. Takes care of my baby girl. So oh awesome. yay! All right, so you're born. Yeah, but you see all this stuff. You obviously your. So I was born in Capital City, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Okay, so Always skip school to go to New Orleans. <laughs> That's the truth. Come on. And, if you uh, were that close to New Orleans, wouldn't you skip school to I go to New Orleans? I was just fascinated. My favorite instrument, I can not I can do a lot of things talent-wise, but I cannot, I'm not musically inclined at all. And I was, I mean, saxophonists will always have my heart. And seeing them in New Orleans and oh, the yeah. statued ladies. There's nothing like that. Who, oh, it's truly just breathtaking. You know what I mean? So I studied theater in high school, but we didn't really have a, um, I remember at East Baton Rouge Parish School System, I would stand on the board and of uh, like the steps and like petition for theater and dance to come to our school because my high school really didn't even have a program and it wasn't initiated. Oh, until... look who popped in. Oh, we should have a doorbell hello. like Andy does. Hello. Uh, hello. The fabulous Maxine. The fabulous Maxine. Oh, thank you. I thought I was getting the Roxy, but I see it's a little darker color. It's a little color. different. It's well, a little strong. We'll work on it. Yay. We'll work on it. Oh, yes. <laughs> 
But so yeah. Maxine's here for the audience. We love yes. her. And she's the reason Roxy's here because she yeah. made the intro. So we appreciate her. So anyway, I just studied theater for pretty much my entire life. And so you went and got an actual degree yes, at UCF. Yes, I just Go graduated uh, from UCF with a Bachelor's of Fine Arts. Congratulations. It really did like just happen. <laughs> Congratulations. And what Thank was that you. like? Was it difficult no, with all of your UCF... talent and background? Or how was the program? Because it was well, very... Well, I did. I will say I was kind of confined into a box. Right. You're, you're put in like, you know, this is theater. And um, I never really got to... The things that I w was really passionate about and interested in kind of had to be put on the back burner just to receive a piece of paper. Sure. You know what I mean? Like, it's all about who you know and what you bring to that audition. It's not necessarily like, did you do you have a degree or do you not have a degree? Did you have to have, like, a lot of people, I'm going to push this back a little. Do you have to have, um, when people do, like, internships, did you have to have a certain number of plays that you were in or go on a certain yeah, number you of have auditions? To, yes, you had, to, you had to audition every semester, um, whether you liked the play or the director or not. You had to have a certain amount of theater credits. You had to have a certain amount of shop credits. So you had to sew for a certain amount of hours. You had to do... Oh, you had to learn all of it. Oh, my gosh. You had to do makeup. Yeah. People are like, how did you do makeup? I took a class. <laughs> I had it for my Who final. Who knew there was a class for that? For my final, I had to do a 18th century Marie Antoinette updo wig. Nice. Yeah, it was quite... It was quite did beautiful. you hear that, Nicole? Because Nicole is doing... The Mozart, we were talking about um, the, the girl you know who's doing the muses, the Mozart oh, muses. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's and that's, it, it's Mozart meets, meets Marie Antoinette. That's oh, the thought that's process be behind it. So, yeah, that's oh. so cool. So, you had to do everything, which is good. You have to learn about the back, the stage, and mm -hmm. decor, and, mm -hmm. and all of that, and props. I'm truly, and, I'm just so passionate about theater. Really. Do you think it's were your grandparents who were influential? Did they just did they also have a love of theater, or they just no, allowed you to? No, 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 no. I was just like the the little girl that was like, I'm gonna grow up and be a star, and then everybody grows out of it, and then I just didn't. <laughs> I haven't either, apparently. And yeah. I'm at my age of 95, I still <laughs> want to be a star. No, but I think that's amazing. But it obviously was you had enough passion. To continue to do it, you yeah. just wasn't a fly-by-night thing where you no. um, wanted to perform or you performed in front of your grandparents. You really took it to the next level. So, and I'm doing it. And like, you're I'm, doing I'm it. You're doing happy. it full time. This is your business. This is yeah. your livelihood and your passion. But you do so many things. <laughs> I couldn't even figure out how many I could list. I'm a true vaudevillian. You I'm are a true. juggler so, of the craft. So, so define vaudeville because we have a lot of people on here. I see them that are younger than. Okay, you. so vaudeville is sideshow theater. Vaudeville is variety entertainment. Um, it is it is the cabaret style of everybody just getting together and doing their stick, their act, the thing that that they do. And when you're like me and you can juggle a bunch of different talents, it makes you more versatile and more in demand in the business. So what are your what are your talents that you would would go with a oh vaudeville my show? My special skills. Um, well, like I said, I have my accents. I have uh, I'm yeah, belly dancing. I've been That's belly right, dancing you're a belly a dancer. Yeah, I've been belly dancing for a while. Currently, I belly dance a lot with Phantasmagoria. My character, Alithia, is an immortal belly dancer. Um, <laughs> there she goes with the voices every, again. Everything from <laughs> from snake charming to face painting. Wait, snake to, charming? Yes. No, I'm my fascinated friend, by this. I really well, know. I met um, Sylvia. Shout out to her. She is the creative director of A Petrified Forest, and I met her. Um, working a petrified forest uh, for Phantasmagoria about two years ago as Alithia, and she was just this gorgeous woman covered in ball pythons, and I love snakes. And so immediately I was just like drawn to her. Um, I also read tarot cards, and I, and I read tarot for her, and had like a really incredible connection with her. And um, ever since then, she like lets me like borrow. Zero is her favorite. He's Zero the Danger Noodle, and sometimes Olivia will be. Singing. I'm sorry, what's his name? Zero, Zero the, the Danger, Danger Noodle. Noodle. Yes. <laughs> I had a feeling I was going to be laughing this entire. So I, sometimes I dance with him, and I it's love really that. it's really fun. Uh, Christina says, "Hey Ted, looking fab. Thank you. Oh, Let's he is so Let's sign up for fabulous. a belly dance class. Can you imagine? <laughs> oh please, oh, please God. come belly, belly dance. My is shins so good alone for you. would bounce everywhere, mm -hmm. let alone my stomach. It's about shimmying. You're supposed to make it bounce. Oh, I don't you even like know where it. to go with You that. like it. Nobody wants to see that. Everybody wants right to now. see that. <laughs> I do not. Oh my God, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, so tell me about the, so you you fortune tell too. So you do all of this stuff. Yes. It sounds like a one woman well, it's carnival or talk one about, woman. You want to talk about like divine energy. So like you said, people don't just wake up and want to do this. Correct. I really did know that, and I still know this hasn't happened yet. Like I'm not saying, I do believe that I have discernment from my mother's side. And I, I kind of have problems talking about that because there are so many skeptics out there. But I really, at 16 years old, I really felt um, certain things would happen in our society and it would be like deja vu. 
and I couldn't ignore it anymore. So I wanted to look more into like how to not necessarily predict things, but like just just understand it for myself. Talk about the discernment, because I, I also believe I have right. that gift. Well, so. some people I believe so, everybody has like a superpower. You know what I mean? And it, it, it's your duty to yourself to explore that. You know Agreed. what I mean? My mother is a healer. She's a nurse and her hands, anytime I'm cramping, anytime I have a headache, she'll put her hands on me and it's just like a wave of yeah. cool. If I don't have that. I do not have that. But, <laughs> You're not the healer. But before Pulse, for example, I the day before Pulse, I couldn't sleep, I couldn't eat, my hands were like swollen. I had horrible nightmares that night about something like that happening and woke up to that on the news. Wow. Same thing for 9-11. Same thing for all these terrible, I remember there's a plane crash and I remember being on the plane in my dream. I never dream. I never have true rim cycle deep dreams well, I need until to call something. You before I go on the so, next plane. So I went to Galveston, Texas, and I saw this witchy shop one day when I was 16 on vacation, and something like pulled me in. I bought my first tarot card deck, and I started reading by myself, secretively, didn't tell anybody, for six years. Wow. And it wasn't until uh, John Dodonna casted me in Phantasmagoria as Olympia a year after I was already performing as a belly dancer that he was like, we got a request for a tarot card reader. Do you, uh, do you know, do you know anybody? And I was like, John, I've been reading tarot for six years. And so it's just divine. Like right. I grew up knowing that I am going to own a vaudeville dinner theater show. And that is going to be a community place for people. To is that your goal? Is that your goal now? That's gonna, that your no, it's like, it's going to happen. You know, it's out there, it's in the universe, it's already happening. It's already happening. You know what I mean? So, so tarot card, for example, that's just another example of like, when you're doing you and you're living your highest purpose, your greatest self and opportunities will manifest. I totally agree with You know what I mean? I never read tarot cards for anybody else until someone asked me to, you know? And now I'll read tarot for you. I'll just come over and you'll, you'll like have it. that experience. No, I, I'm, I'm fascinated by all of that. And I think that there is a place for it and there's mm -hmm. gotta be something behind it or it wouldn't have been around for thousands and thousands of it's years. Really true. I'm already getting a hard time because I'm not looking at you enough. Um, oh. <laughs> you're not here, so here's the difficulty with looking. You're, we don't understand, but we are literally this close. So, and I've got alcohol on my breath, and I don't really no, want to be breathing on her. And no, yeah, I'm, so I'm looking all faces. over the place. I'm looking here. I'm looking here. So I do appreciate those comments. I normally would look at someone constantly, but it is a little oh hard you're when you're so trying to turn sweet. like. Yeah, this. you're fine. Let's look at you guys. Um, Hello, everyone. <laughs> All right, so tell us more about cabaret. So how does cabaret and vaudeville work? Is it is it all, because I did cabaret, burlesque, and vaudeville. Well, I do it all, but it but is all kind of difference? stitched together. Okay, so cabaret, um, I love cabaret because big spectacle, Aristotle always said that spectacle is the least important thing in theater. And I don't, I don't necessarily agree with Aristotle <laughs> about that. I think, you know what I mean? Like, who, I would love to see somebody who can't sing at all, but is dripping in Swarovski crystal that they look like a disco ball. You know what I mean? Spectacle really is important and cabaret is so great because it brings together all these different talents. A lot of time it's singing, which is something I truly can't do, um, but it's everybody getting together maybe the night before. You know what I mean? Vaudeville for us, we, we have one one hour tech rehearsal before the show, before doors open and then well, you know seems I mean? very gyp gypsy -esque. It is. It's, it's that caravan, pop-up performance style, in your face, raw, organic, just living in it. It's not, you're really, you're this close to the performers, you can talk to us. That's what cabaret is. It's that one chair on a stage and, and the actor, the actor is the energy. That's what I, I think you of don't need um, the, the Liza Minnelli. That's very what, Liza, because very of the, Liza Minnelli. The show, because of the movie yes. that she won the Oscar for. Yes. So. Um, I think of that. And then what's Fishnets and red lipstick. Fishnet. It's all you need. <laughs> and then what about, what, so what's the difference between vaudeville, then burlesque, I'm sorry, then uh, so, cabaret, well, then burlesque? burlesque. So cab okay, so vaudeville for me, and this is different for everybody, vaudeville is like this big umbrella. Cabaret is a type of theater underneath the umbrella, okay. and so is burlesque. You could have a vaudeville cabaret style show with burlesque entertainment. Do you know Understood. what I'm saying? Understood, yes. Is, it, is, is burlesque, because I think most people on here, if you ever saw that movie, there was a movie that came out burlesque, so it's that like might be the only exposure <laughs> they've ever had to it. Yeah. But is that more, risque is a crazy word, but is it more about the dance and the interaction with the audience on burlesque, or how is that well, there's different so many, from? There's different types of burlesque. There's neoclassical burlesque, which is what we know of today. The well, now I'm really bah, 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 boom. <laughs> the, that's, that's what I we know it. about. But my burlesque, the burlesque that I love, is the vaudeville burlesque, is 
traditional. So I hate to, I'm a big history person. I love history. Me too. Yeah, that's what got me into Because I've lived through most of it. Yeah, so, <laughs> so funny. So, so traditional burlesque, the, the start of burlesque was in the 18th century by Lydia Thompson. She came over and started the British Blondes here in the United States from, um, I believe, England. That's and so cool. she came over and she got this like, it, it's truly an incredible story. She's one of my role models uh, of burlesque because, like I said, we think of burlesque as this super sexy thing. And I'm not saying that it's not. It is. And it has its own place. But true burlesque is vaudeville theater. She used to do um, spoof comedy. She would give women a voice who didn't have a voice because back then women oh, sure, weren't even on then. stage. Right. You know what I mean? But it got its sexy connotation because she would do... Um, political theater because women not only did they not have a voice but they certainly didn't have a voice in politics and she was very passionate about politics so she would dress up in these like colonel costumes and these were days when women didn't even show their ankles right. so imagine her dressed up as a man showing her legs with the socks so, so she utilized it, it to, super, to empower oh my gosh she was like nothing they can see the woman's figure but she wasn't thinking of it like that. She was thinking, I'm just dressed like a man but right. people were coming to see her body but she was using that as the, the, the gas that she needed to set off her own So voice. let's talk about that, because we talked a little bit about this before the show went live. So there is an empowerment there. You want to empower women. You yes, talked about that. that's my highest And power. one of the things that I think, and explain to them the thought process on this, and you sort of just did a little bit, but I think when people immediately think of burlesque or cabaret, they think of something risque that you're throwing around your stuff. It have to be. But, but you have all the power in that. And yeah, that's oh, it's the super empowering. Oh my gosh. So explain that to them. So, I think so that's yeah, so people like I, I try to explain this to my family all the time because it, it's really hard. You know, I'm sure my dad didn't want his daughter to grow up and do burlesque, but I try to explain to him there's so many different facets within burlesque, and all are super empowering to the woman and to who she is as a person. You could do, like I said, political burlesque, making a statement. Sure. You could do um, community. Like there, I did a show recently. I'm in two different troops here in Orlando: Emerald City Cabaret and Big Bang Boom Cabaret. I have a show with Big Bang Boom Cabaret the last Friday of every month, just like I have Vaudeville Entertainment the last Tuesday of every month at Maxine's on Shine. And so the next show coming up is erotica themed. And as soon as you think of erotica, you think whips and chains. But I'm actually doing a piece um, about uh, women empowerment um, to an Imagine Dragon song where I'm covering the stage in um, a drop cloth and rolling around in flour, throwing the flour everywhere and like Role, like just being an in it, you know what I mean? Right. And that's not whips and chains, you know what I'm saying? But it's still erotic. Sure. It's whatever you, you know what I but mean? But you're in control of it. Nobody's yeah. telling you what to do. Your art is your art, so you're performing as performance mm -hmm. art. And it's you're telling art. The... you're telling the story. Yeah. You're in charge of it. And I think a lot of people think that when you do that, it's it's not the same people as, um, and I'm gonna say it out loud because I had a lot of comments go, oh my God, it looks like it could be stripping. Well, listen, even if it was stripping, who cares? Yeah. But the, 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 I think the difference there is that you're 100 percent, there's a lot of differences, but you're in charge. This is art. This, mm -hmm. is, this is your, you created this, the thing with the flower, that, mm -hmm. what you're going to be doing. That's your creation. Yeah. And everything that you're doing, you're yeah. empowering and you're making the decision. Mm -hmm. You're the one doing it. It's true. And then for those skeptics, I tell them, come see a show. Correct. Don't judge what you don't know. Agreed. You know what I mean? Come see a show and then give me your feedback. I love feedback. I love feedback. Every show I'm like, Maxine, what did you like? What did you not like? How do I implement this? Let me write it down. You know what I mean? Well, no that's takers because you, you, you are passionate about your art. You're passionate about what you do. Mm -hmm. And so if you are that passionate about it, it, it's palpable. And we've had a lot of comments, by the way, about how um, great energy and it's all about you and your energy, yeah. but that comes from your passion for what you do. Well, it, it is, it is truly, like I said, my higher power, I really truly feel is to empower women. I feel the best about myself when I teach, um, I'm actually the pole fitness manager at Stigma. All right. So talk about yeah, that. I was going to get to that. I'm the pole fitness manager at Stigma Tattoo Bar here in downtown Orlando. I teach pole lessons every Monday and Wednesday at eight o'clock. They're the most affordable pole lessons in Orlando. They're only $15 an hour, or you can buy a 10 class pass for a hundred dollars, which is literally $10 a class, you know, and I also teach um, $20 an hour private lessons at my house and nothing makes me feel better than when I am teaching pole fitness because Talk I, see, about that. I see these women that, you know, like we're conditioned to think like women can't have like upper body strength and women, women don't, can't be strong. We have to be graceful and, and, and feminine, but it's like strength is sexy. 
Right. So I love it when I'm able to like get a get a woman upside down on the pole who never who has a fear of going upside down. You know what I mean? Or I see a girl get her split for the first time and she's glowing. I've taught people that are I teach currently I'm teaching six years old to sixty years old. Wow. And everyone can do pole fitness. Everyone. I, I have no wish to compete. I literally just love sharing the, the craft, so I do it at like the lowest rate possible because pole fitness is such a huge part of, it's one of my acts, it's one of my, my things that I do. I, I perform pole fitness as a, a fitness demonstration, but like I said, for, for workout, it's all I do, Ted. I don't run, I ate pizza, I ate a whole pizza last night. <laughs> she had a whole no. pizza, <laughs> See, You know what I mean? Like I just do pole fitness. I have a pole in my dining room, so instead of a table, I have a pole, and instead of going to the refrigerator, I just spin around a couple times, and seriously, like nothing makes me feel better than doing pole. So dance. I had a, I had somebody make a comment. No, why we don't want you to pole pole dance? I love you. No, I teach men too. I have a, I have a private lesson with a guy tonight. I set that up so she would say that. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, no, but I I I think men don't realize that. Mm -hmm. They don't realize that because it's it it is always you think of women when you think of anything yeah. to do with a pole. This is yeah. a weird conversation. It's actually, I get but so I mean jealous. it in the most respectful way. I get really jealous. My boyfriend, Skylar, our first date, he came over and at this point I wasn't as established. I had my pole in my garage in Florida. I was like slippery all over the place. And I remember um, I was like, I had just gotten some, some I'm advanced now. I have like two or three advanced tricks now after four years, but um, I was just intermediate. So I like showed him my invert and my butterfly and my uh, Phoenix and like just, just little like tricks or, and when I, I was like trying to impress him on our first date, like, look at what I can do. <laughs> I got off the pole and he did everything times 10. No way. And it, I mean, you would think I'd be like, <gasps> but I was like, like, I was so <laughs> mad, you know what I mean? Because guys, like, they don't realize, that. like, they are so strong and they get things so Mostly, fast. Yeah, guys have natural upper body yes, strength. Yes, yes. Yeah. So it's really, it's. I love teaching men because they're able to just get it. See, guys, all those, all of you, you that know? made the comments, I want to do it, I want to do it. Come see me. You know me what I want to say? I, I've have, and this is all about you. There are more new people watching this episode than I have seen in really? a very long time. Hi like there, and I won't call any of you out because <laughs> I don't know if you're at work or you're, you know, you're, you're at l your lunch or you're just like, I gotta watch this show. But I love that. I think that's because you have this passion and the the topic is unique. Um, so, but it's all about you bringing the people here. I've, I actually have seen people pop on that I have never seen pop on a show. Oh before. my gosh! Well, hello so, everyone. That's good stuff. All right, talk about being a pirate queen. Oh my gosh! Okay. And somebody said I want to give her. Um, Marsha Fritas? Marsha? Yeah? She said, you're sitting next to, you're with the most talented queen right next to you. How oh do you feel? Gosh. Well, does she mean medieval times or does she mean like just... I don't know. Okay. She could have meant me. Who, Who knows? knows? Who knows? I mean... Okay. So I am the pirate queen of performance art. Every body in the business has like a, a little tagline, a little plug, and that's mine. And it, it didn't make it up. It kind of just happened. Um, I've been obsessed with pirates since I was... A child, um, I would go to the library and read about them. I would watch movies. This is long before pirates. What was it period. about pirates? Everything. I'm obsessed, Not, but beyond drinking rum, I love sailing. <laughs> um, actually, I know this sounds funny, but there is a sailor that I'm friends with. His name is Sailor Jerry. He lives in Melbourne. I go sailing with him. I love learning the ropes. I love rigging. Um, the first time I ever fainted was uh, in St. Augustine. I had a very like visceral, like beaut, like my feet literally went out from underneath me because I didn't know that 18th century cargo ships still existed that were under sail power. Yeah. And I, I, it was the galleon and I got on board and I looked up at the rigging and I just blacked out because I thought I died and gone to heaven. You oh, know what I mean? Cool. Like I think that's heaven cool. for everybody is different and mine is sailing the Caribbean. There you go. You know what I mean? I love treasure hunting. The day I find a piece of eight is like, I'm going to be okay for the rest of my life. You know what I mean? Like I'm obsessed with pirates. I know everything. Historically, about Edward Teach, who we know as Blackbeard. Yes. Um, I believe I'm a descendant of Anne Bonny herself. I've researched her extensively, and there's a lot of skeptical about her not actually facing the gallows with uh, Jack Rackham and Mary Reed, but actually. Escaping. She really does know. Yeah, her no, I'm, I'm a huge I nerd. <laughs> No, that's I'm a huge awesome. Nerd. Oh, oh. So anyway, so I've been a pirate queen my entire life. I mean, I guess I was a pirate princess until turning 25, and then I like upgraded when I got. Um, I just got cast as the queen at Medieval Times, so that'll be nice and fun. Isn't that cool? Now I didn't yeah. even know Medieval Times was still open. How crazy is that? Well, so, I I would actually love to make a shout out today, Thursday. Yeah, please do. They are opening their new show, so everybody should go check it out. 
where the princess, who uh, my boyfriend Skylar, he's in the opening cast. So I love you, baby, and I hope you have a wonderful show today. He, I can't believe it. He is he's truly the star of the show, like not the queen. He has the most lines. He's on the horse. He's the announcer, the MC. He's just he really gives 110. That's awesome. percent And so I'm I'm so happy for you, baby. I'm so proud of you, and you kill it tonight. Um, but before they opened this new show, so before today, I would come support him and take pictures of him because I love photography and I'm like all up in there trying to like document his sexiness. And, um, and I, I didn't, as an actress, when I go see a show, of course the first thing you think is, well, can I be in this show? And right. I was like, absolutely not. I do not want to be in this show. The woman, the, the princess had no voice. She, she didn't really have a free thought. She didn't, um, I felt like it would be an insult for what I stand for as a woman to be That's cast powerful. in the show. But then I saw on Facebook that they are revamping the show and the princess is no more and now it's a queen that is reigning supreme. And I was like, oh. <laughs> I I'm got not this. Yeah, so I went and auditioned and it was the best audition of my life. I love it. Um, it was a cold read, meaning they give you a script and you just read it. And by the time I went in, I was off book because the lines were so like organic for me and um, I got it. And now I'm training. I, I don't know when my first show is. I think it's going to be around May, May 1st. Um, so then you guys can come see me. That's so cool. And yeah. what does that mean with all your passion and love for pirates, for you to be the pirate queen? Oh my now? gosh. Well, I'm not the pirate. It's medieval times. Medieval, that's like a, a century ahead of pirateology, unfortunately. But uh, I was in Pirates Dinner Adventure. So I was the oh, aerialist I forgot for about them. that too. Yeah. I just, <laughs> no, you're in a lot. Like everybody's like, she's in a lot. She does everything. Yeah. What about Phantasmagoria? Oh, you're gonna Phantasmagoria. Shout out. Okay. Mm. Jeremy Woods, a mutual friend of ours. Well, I don't want to, let, let me say this. I wasn't in Pirates and Adventure. I was in the Three Musketeers show, which was their matinee show. I was the Vagabond, which was the aerialist. And I will, there are a couple memories in life that you will never forget. And there's a moment, because I, I love aerial arts, and that was, they saw my pole fitness videos, and they asked me to come in to do silks and lira and tightrope. That's and cool. they trained me. Daniela Merriman, she's incredible, and she trained me in all these apparatuses. There was a moment for, instead of silks, they hoist me up in a net, a fishing net. Talk about pirate queen dreams. They hoist me up in a fishing net. I'm like spinning around and my boyfriend Skylar, who was also in the show, who's an incredible vocalist, is singing as I'm like up oh, to nice. as I'm upside down in this fishing wow. net. But then they close the show. Moving on. Anyway, oh, wow. so all right, so moving so on to Fantasmagoria. Fantasmagoria. So I play Olivia, the and I don't think world. a lot of people know. Give them just a little. Oh, and I want us to be able to go on for a little while. Yeah, yeah. We started late, Fantasmagoria so. is a steampunk Victorian macabre storytelling troupe. Uh, we're based here in Orlando, Florida. Our director is John Dadana and uh, his beautiful wife Dion. They do such an incredible job of bringing to life stories from from Edgar Allan Poe, Robert Frost. Charles Dickens, and not only do they incredible storytelling and bring back traditional beautiful literature of horror, and, and, and we do some comedical bits too. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's truly great. But I, I'm more of a sideshow performer. Not that I don't have speaking roles, but I, I maintain my character, Alithia, very well. And um, I do pop-up performances. I just did a live after five in downtown Sanford, uh, Dias de Muertes. Um, we also have some incredible opportunities coming up that I'm not technically allowed to speak about, but if you want to hear about that, uh, stay up to date with Phantasmagoria on there our Facebook go. account, and you will be seeing a lot more at Alithia at a very big event here soon. See, that's in awesome. Okay, and what about your company? So, Vodka. talk. Yeah, I, but I want I want people to know how. How can they engage you? What's the best way for them? Okay, yeah. So if you know any variety performance artists, please send them to Vaudeville Entertainment, Vaudeville Entertainment on Facebook, Vaudeville Entertainment on Instagram, and Vaudeville Entertainment on our Gig Salad account. Gig Salad is how we book our entertainers for private gigs. So say you had a big event coming up soon and you wanted a stilt walker, a fire dancer, a juggler, then you would contact us through Gig Salad for our rates. Gig and then, Salad. Gig Salad. All right, we've got to put yeah, that on. Yeah, but. That's awesome. but but if you have if you have if you're friends with those artisans, then you would send them my way, and I would cast them in our vaudeville dinner theater show at Maxine's One Shine every last Tuesday of the month. So it's a great community okay. of artisans where we can all produce art locally, support art, and dinner and th food and theater. Like it's just all it's a big bow all together. Yeah, what's better than that, right? I love it. All right, so you have been amazing. Oh, like, I didn't have to do so anything. <laughs> You see how fast it goes, though? Yeah, it goes it was so by much so fun. fast. I do want to say about Vaudeville Entertainment, though, Please. real quick. Um, Anything you want to say? Uh, Maxine, you don't know this. This Can happened. I pop in? Yes, I'll this, is, this is exciting. This just happened yesterday. Yay, Maxine. So, Vaudeville Entertainment, I'm very passionate about, dinner, okay. about dinner theater, and I'm so thankful to Maxine's on Shine for giving me a platform here to express art. 
uh, with them at Maxine's on Shine every last Tuesday of the month. So come see our show April 24th. Next Tuesday. Yes, next Tuesday. It's going to be incredible. Can you tell them what you're going to do? The I'm doing burlesque this time. Normally I belly dance, but this time Diamonds I'm Diamonds are a girl's best friend. Yes. She's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. I've not seen her. Sometimes she even gets up on the bar. Yeah, and I'm going to do some fire dancing outside for the encore with my nice. fans. And we have liquor now, so we're going to create it's a gonna be Hallelujah. show. Hallelujah. I have the very first oh, spot show with liquor. Cheers to that. 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 Yeah. We're so proud but of her. real quick, real quick. So, so we have the troupe here in Orlando, Florida. Eventually, I'd like to have it all over the country. But we also have it in my hometown, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, run by our beautiful Louisiana ambassador, Brielle Edmonds. And she's doing a fabulous job. She has her show coming up May 6th at Boudreaux's and Thibodeau's. And it's going to be the same thing that we're doing at Maxine's on Shine, just there for my, my home state. And yesterday, she called me and told me that she just booked three more shows at a new venue, yeah. The Smiling Dog. Uh, for May, June, and July. So, vaudeville is alive and well. Come support the arts. Book this girl. She yes. is amazing. <laughs> so multi talented. Gig salad. She didn't even get yeah. everything that she and did. Check I me know. out. All right. Check they, me out on Instagram at oh, Pirate fine. Queen Roxy. All right. So, we're going to share all of that when we post the video. Everything we talked about, how to book um, Roxy, how to go to the show on Tuesday night, all of that. Uh, she's got an amazing Facebook Yay. page. Uh, her pictures, it was so difficult to choose a picture. I think I told you Aww. that because you have such a wide range of what you do. And I wanted to have the most representative of what you do. But the cool thing about it is that all of those are representative of yeah. you. And so, the fire. And the fire. Oh, yeah, oh, the fire. I love fire dancing. I'm not as, I mean, like, I'm, I've am i been only doing that for a year. It's probably, like, my newest craft. Um, but I, I love fire dancing, fire breathing. Um, I swallowed a couple times, which was interesting yeah ouch yeah it's not that bad once you learn like the tricks of the trade it's it's really not all that these bad. ing all these action verbs she does <laughs> well, i'm action, tired thinking about it acting that's to true. be to be not to be all right so we're going to share all of roxy's information any uh, when we post the video any parting words of wisdom for them anything you want to leave them with you you are such a breath hmm. of fresh air so thank you for being on I'm the show to think. parting words let me let me take a swig and then take I'll... a swig of roxy's <laughs> Whatever, mm. what do we call that? Roxy? Roxy on the rocks. Roxy on the rocks. <laughs> Your fears be? are not there to scare you. They are there to let you know that something is worth it. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers to you. Adore you. Thank you so much for being on the show, honey. You're amazing. Thank you so much Look for at all having this. me. I really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. You're the best. You're the best. All right, so, comfortable. so right, 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 right here I am. <laughs> All right, we love you guys. Thank you so much. And I promise you that we will respond to all of your comments. She just was going on, and I wanted I'm to so hear sorry. everything. No, I love it. My Go dad used to be an auctioneer, so I'm around people that talk really fast. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. No, no, it was really, it was actually super, super good and engaging. And you have so many people here again that, that came on that sat quiet, but Aww. they're watching. Well, and thank I love you guys that. so much so for watching. We love you guys. Thank you so much. We'll see you tomorrow. We have three shows tomorrow. It's going to be awesome. We're launching um, a big, big, big. Uh, website tomorrow and servicepot.com. Um, so I can't make it up. Uh, so here we go. All right. Love you. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Erin. Thank you, Maxine. <laughs>